Hello fellow Arcanists, I'm Pruitt and this is Jim Davis, and you know how wizards have power that defies conception? Well guess what, you have to conceive of that first. So we're going to give you some imagination fuel, and we're talking character concepts for mages on WebDM. This episode is sponsored by the City of Mist RPG. Discover the city, modern, gritty, and rife with magic and mystery. Your characters are ordinary people with legendary alter egos. I've played it, and I can honestly tell you that I think City of Mist handles the superhero genre just about perfectly. The merging of narrative mechanics and their unique tag-based system lets you customize your character with a level of exactness that I rarely see. And I will never forget the character I got to play. Check it out, y'all. They've got a start box, player's guide, core set, and the ultimate set to choose from. We at WebDM love this game. Link in the comments and description. All right, Jim. Let's uh, let's 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 dig down deep and uh, find that sweet sweet imagination fuel for everyone out there in uh, WebDM land. Uh, we're talking about mages today, character concepts for mages. And when we say mages, I think it's a, so nobody thinks it's a misnomer here. Like we're just talking casters, right? This could be from, right, a, right. if you're in D&D, &D, this is, this is anywhere from a bard to a warlock, to a sorcerer, <laughs> a wizard, hell, some druids could kind of fall right. under this. If you don't want to go sure. like full nature priest, you know, but mm -hmm. like be more of a active, like just like a mage. Like a caster, yeah. someone, someone in the world, elementalist, those who wield, wield the fire of creation, yeah. right? Yes. Um, so, I, you know, this, this I'm already no, no, there's no gilding the lily. <laughs> yeah. So, what, what's your first concept that we want to talk? Let's let's dig into. Yeah. So, like the mage is really, uh, really stands with the warriors, like being the the iconic sword and sorcery, you know, fantasy uh, icon, mm -hmm. you know. And like when I think of them, I, I I I find it hard to escape like the the way that fantasy was sort of portrayed when I first got into fantasy, you know, where mm -hmm. wizards were old with the beard and the pointy hat and the robes, and you know that yeah. that almost all uh, mages were wizards, right? Like they 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 were book magic, and they were just nerds about magic. Right. Yeah, yeah. And like it was pretty like not even very far under the surface that this was a clear like <laughs> like we feel this way in real life as D and D players and nerds and so mm -hmm. as you know, find myself with my nose in a book regularly, I'm gonna gravitate towards that kind of character. And I think for a long time that total nerd for magic really defined what a mage was for me. And they got the yeah. spell book, they've got the the stuff they're students right yeah. um and so that that's uh, something i've leaned into their arcane uh they have their <laughs> arcane pocket protector whole set up yes. there with the <laughs> with the compass and all that so they can sketch out their their spells <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah and so you know when i play this kind of character uh and i, and I have many times like i like i'm trying to figure out like are they are they doing what, you know, what's the reason behind this? A lot of times these characters like don't necessarily come from uh, a particular type of background, but if there's a common thread, it would be, you know, they're sort of down They're They're not, they don't have like positions of power in society, right? Like this is their only Avenue for, for any kind of life for themselves. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, I, you know, characters that I made from like back from second edition, they just sort of like fit this same mold. And um, it wasn't until I became sort of self conscious of it. I was like, man, they really all kind of are the same <laughs> uh, <laughs> character type that I wanted to take it in yeah, different yeah. places. <laughs> oh, no, but I understand that. And I think that like anybody who's been out there and like, you know, what I love about this concept is this is very relatable. And anyone who, you know, it's like, oh, I want a better life for myself, I need to go to college and hit the books. Sure. And yeah. get some learning done so I can like get a better job or whatever. Like a lot of people have had that experience. And so right. there's nothing wrong with like taking away accounting or whatever business management and just overlaying magic and having right. you have those same experiences. 
you yeah. had to, you know, you had to go and you had to pledge to a certain thing and you had to do that. You had to, you know, <laughs> eat crap for the first year because you were having to spend all your money on your books and your spells. And, right. you know, and, <laughs> and now that you have achieved first level and you're out adventuring, this is where you get to, you get to flex, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, mm -hmm. you put in the time, you got your diploma from mage college. Um, right. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I think it gravitates a lot towards sort of the student archetype because of that because a lot of people like, especially for me and a lot of people I played with at the time, we we're all like college aged and well, not everybody was as super into going to college as I eventually became. Like it was all sort of mm -hmm. just you're going to school, right? So for the for my characters, like I'm I went from, you know, my my wizard is schooled by one person another wizard like out in the mm -hmm. middle of nowhere i'm i mop their floors i i you know i did a bunch of just menial stuff while they taught me like little tiny cantrips backward cantrips had to take up a spell slot <laughs> you know and <laughs> you had to spend your one first level cantrip? spell there was, there was. <laughs> it took up a first little spell slot uh <laughs> so you know, you, um, you know, you've just, you've worked yourself to the bone for it. And now they've gifted you the, your own, you know, your own spell book. They've prepared it with spells for you that they think you'll need and sent you off in the world as a journeyman wizard, uh, to, to start your craft. And it's like very secretive and, and interpersonal mm -hmm. and more from that to like, no, my guy came from college, you know, no, he's, he went to school. Yeah. Like, he's got tuition <laughs> you know? yeah you gotta i gotta pay that back now uh, right. <laughs> yeah and uh if you're looking to learn a little bit more about the magic of this game that we uh love to play head on over to patreon and it won't cost you an arm and a leg like tuition uh so check that out for a little bit more learning anyway next uh next concept this is more of uh, uh this is why it's good to play multiple uh, role-playing games but something more akin yeah. to like warhammer's magic where the magic can change you like right. like but playing a mage out where the the more you cast and depending on maybe like what you cast you begin to change physically you know right. psychologically like how like what how do you have i know you've played mages like this jim okay so this is this is to me gets to the heart of what makes mages and and the idea of like a magic user in the most generic sense appealing is like they're dealing with these forces and powers whether like you conceive of magic as energy uh, into the force or something like that or whether magic and spells are something different uh, you know still supernatural but not necessarily like energy like any mm -hmm. of that is essentially like you set yourself apart a bit right like you said i'm going to focus on this one thing about reality and like that reality is is you know is malleable when i use this power right so at some point to me magic just becomes weird right it, ha it has to like completely change a person's perception of like how they interact with the world you know like for me and you we just we move around and we've got arms and a physicality to us and 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 mm -hmm. mages don't need necessarily to worry about that sometimes just a sheer act of will changes reality they didn't have to do anything other than exert that will so like how would that change a person's personality <laughs> right like how would you relate to others or or to the world around you how would you deal with frustrations and things so i kind of think like magic changes a person once they start practicing both like in terms of their mm -hmm. personality and then potentially like their bodies you know you, you mentioned warhammer like they're those you know, red wizards or red mages, I forget what they're called, the red college, where it's like their hair catches on fire, right? Or those who start yeah. to turn, their skin starts to turn gold because of magic. Not to mention mm -hmm. chaos sorcerers. Just mutants, all of them, <laughs> mm -hmm. warped by this magical well, but, power. <laughs> yeah, my favorite was always the, my, my metal uh, mage, who yeah. you know, they start slowly start to like slow down and eventually are just like have to be wheeled everywhere like on a like mm -hmm. a mage palanquin or a right <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like a dolly as you get dollied That's everywhere you go you, yeah but yeah let me tell you something that earth magic oh that man they wield it uh they, yeah. you never see them wield it but they're doing it they're there yeah though they exert their will and like even like more mundane mages right where the the you know they're not being warped by their magic or something like that like just the kinds of things they get up to right Lots of musty mm -hmm. libraries and and 
and things like that. They're dealing with weird and strange substances, whether alchemical or supernatural or something like that. At some point, they yeah. spend a lot of time by themselves. They do things that make them smell weird. And like, I just like, I, I know people like that in real life, and they're often hard to get along with. <laughs> you know, like sometimes <laughs> I'm that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, if I, you know, if you could also wield magic, what would that look like as a character? I just, I, I like the idea of, of magic's just weird. And maybe everyone mm -hmm. that it gets involved with magic is a bit of a weirdo. Um, and I like that. Yeah. Something just I can I can always take a character uh, and run with it. Uh, you introduce this one because I know you love okay. this. Uh, this sure, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get where you're going with. So yeah, to me the the, the thing with a, a mage as an archetype, and that could be like any of the class expressions you'd have in D and D or, or or another game. Like at the bottom line, this is a person who's a liminal being that they stride. Or, you know, they stand to try these two worlds of the supernatural and the mundane. And, and in this sense, they, they sort of like act as a, a threshold between those two. They're both sort of like a guardian and a way through. In that sense, if you think about mm -hmm. the fact that like wizards being able to summon extra worldly creatures like elementals and demons and the like, it's like, well, would they get here if a wizard didn't summon them? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. would we have this problem if it weren't for wizards? Didn't they just create this problem for themselves? Uh, <laughs> and like, the fact that the uh, a wizard in the broad sense a mage um has to relate to this world they came from this mundane world of of, of material needs and cr one eighth commoners and you know all this stuff where their d4 hit dice and and eight through 12 stat range are not gonna cut it in the kind of world that the wizard's in but when the wizard relates to this other supernatural world they're dealing with angels and demons and dragons and you know all kinds of creatures that look at a mere mortal who has some class levels scoff yeah. you know be dead in a few decades right like well i'm just gonna take a nap and then you'll be gone you know right like they either become monsters themselves right the liches and and power mad uh whatever or you know or or have to like contend with the fact that they're mortal and I just I love a character like that because when I think about this character's place in the world, like they go into a village, even as like a third level character or a fifth level character, they're a god. Right? Like, <laughs> like think of just what a fifth level caster in Dungeons and Dragons can do, any type, and then put them in a just a plain village situation. And it's like, how are they not running that place in a week? You know, like, they, yeah. you know, they're just, I mean, there's, I know the hyperbolic question, right? Like, of course, there's plenty of ways, but in terms of what they could do, their capacity to affect reality, mm -hmm. they're gods. Yeah. 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 Leveraging the power that you wield uh, in, 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 in a way such as that, uh, so that people do see you as this thing, this, 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 this higher order of being mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, even though you're, you know, you're a wizard. You know, you still you, you, switch. you still got your twenty five hit points. You know, but sure, sure. Like, but you think, think of first level magic real quick, right? Like, just think of first level magic user, the iconic magic user spells. I can put you to sleep. I can make you my friend, regardless of if you mm -hmm. want. I can create an image of something as detailed as I'd like that you've never seen before. Maybe I've never seen before. Like, mm -hmm. I can read any language that I come across. Right? Like there's all of these things that even a first level caster is able to do that is just to me mind boggling if I put myself in the perspective of a commoner. And I like the idea of playing that character because it gives me perspective. Like a lot of times when I play a caster, I'm too focused on the 20, level 20, level, you know, the, the big stuff. Give me the give me wish, give me gate, give me all that. And don't appreciate the fact that my cantrips and first level spells are amazing <laughs> right? like yeah. they are they are amazing and i am i've set myself apart from every everyone else by virtue of the fact that i'm cast i just i really like mm -hmm. that i don't think i'll ever get tired of coming back to that kind of character so oh yeah, definitely story. definitely uh w one one concept that i i love and can't wait to get back to the battle mage the the hardened fast and dirty evocation like you are there 
to lay down the hurt and lay it down in a large way. Um, I mean, this is this is the this is the battle mage that uh, you know that the warriors are like, no, no, he's good. Like the rest yeah, of yeah, them, he's one eh, of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's one of us. He gets down in right. the trenches. You know, he, he knows how yeah. it is. I think I've uh, I mentioned on our last uh, character concept show of, of mage that I had who I conceive of as a warrior. Right, magic was their weapon. Uh, Python, she's. Um, I, I ended up going with this sort of route of a soldier who wasn't quite able to have a war to fight. And it was an interesting kind of like needing to find a different use for her magic and the like. But one of the things that I really wanted to explore more with her was just this idea that if, if magic is this creative force or emotive or, or maybe even a living thing in and of itself, right? Like there's some types of magic that have uh you know connotations of being living entities like you invite a spell into your mind and it's a living thing what does that mm -hmm. say about the character that they use magic to kill right like if, yeah. if magic is an act of will if it's fundamentally creative as, as a lot of conceptions of magic are uh, it's a force of life something like that what does it mean when it's like i use magic to kill and i use magic specifically designed to kill Mm -hmm. Right. Like I, I think even thinking of classic D and D, right. Just basic rules, player's handbook kind of style D and D. There's a lot of magic. That's like, yeah, this summons fire. So if you're in the fire, you'll get hurt. You know, there's spells where, you know, it's like, yeah, you don't want to get in the middle of a lightning bolt, but you could also use that spell to just summon some lightning and do something fun with it. Right. But when I think about spells, that's like, they just exist to deal damage. Uh, that's some cool. First level ones. Magic Missile, Inflict Wounds, but all the way up to like Death Spell and things like that. And how it's just like, this is a murder spell. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what does it mean that my character employs these to do battle? You know, that, that their magic is specifically designed to end lives. And like, I know it's a different concept in the battlefield, like spraying fire and uh, all that everywhere. But I can't, I don't think I've really gotten a chance to really sit with that one concept uh, i mean i i know i did uh my my yeah. 3.5 caster uh theron who was a sorcerer a st uh, in 5e you'd be a, a storm sorcerer but to Certainly, me that's yeah. a little tame because he was all yeah. that's what he was about like it was just like i use lightning and i use it in very effectively and even if you're resistant to it i don't care um, right it juice it and, up <laughs> and it, it and hey he had a lot of fun if you want if you're a power gamer that only likes to to play warriors pick a sorcerer and just pick an element and just go all in make make johnny storm make make uh you know make the sh the, the shocker or whatever uh but um <laughs> that one guy yeah but <laughs> that one yeah that guy the electric guy um but but like that's how I got into it because I was like, yeah. oh, I mean, I can just hit even bigger. I can hit an area of effect with lightning or I can hit one person really hard or if they hit me, I hit them back. Or and you start to really like it to me, it allowed me to bloom as a as a caster, uh, like playing yeah. casters by just being like, no, no, this guy's a badass and that's this is what he does. Um, and so. I don't know, like the, the, the battlefield mage to me, uh, I, I think back to. Um, uh, Raceland and his training uh, in the, uh, the, the, the what was that? I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy he trained with when oh, they yeah. joined uh, the, the whatever legions, and it's he's yeah. the guy that taught him how to do quick and dirty magic. Because in a oh, in, sure. you don't you don't have time to go through all the gestures in a in a in a in a, in a battlefield because you're dead before you get done. Right. And like just yeah, that yeah. idea of just like learning that quick deadly magic uh, uh, and yeah. and what that would do to you. Like how, how would that change you in the long term? Um, Absolutely. Once you have a few wars under your belt. Once you have a few wars. Yeah. Cause I think there's a lot of mages out there that are just, they fight is it's kind of what they do as part of their adventuring life. Right. Like they're not necessarily battle mages, but they go adventuring. They got it. They're out there. They're, mm -hmm. they're living the adventurer's life. And I think there's some really cool concepts to be explored around the caster that does you know, rough it up a bit and, mm -hmm. um, and, and it doesn't get caught too caught up in academia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, a kind of a bump onto the next kind of class, uh, or concept, which is the adventurer mage. 
this would be like analogous to like a like a like a Laura Croft with spells or an Indiana sure. Jones with yeah. with magic where you you know you got to go out and find these old scrolls you know the, who who does yeah. that you don't have to just buy them from the local vendor sometimes you want to go out and get them yourself oh you cut right. out the middleman <laughs> right yeah yeah especially it, it works really well for like uh D, D type right like where there's been some sort of apocalypse in the, the past and a lot of magic has has like fallen or or, or been forgotten or something like that you know um i think we're looking at sort of the way that D D magicians or magic users acquired spells like taking spell books and scrolls and the like like truly the idea of, of someone that sits in a tower and is sort of bookish and studies all the time that's the weird thing like to me the adventurer mage the the i'm gonna go out there and find the magic and take it and, and learn it to me that's the real like fantasy archetype that that um like how actual play uh, uh it reinforces you know i kind of like that like I've played mm -hmm. this mage before in original Dungeons and Dragons, and it's a blast, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't look like a mage. Nobody knows. I'm just wearing some clothes, <laughs> wearing some rough, yeah. rough clothes, and some, you know, tough leather boots, and like, I don't, you know, you you can get away with a lot because you don't read magician, you don't read magic user. A lot of the magic my character would do is just like I'm just I'm playing with new players. They have no idea what going on uh i could just say whatever i want they don't know i could say that <laughs> and so a lot of it's just like blending this line between just player of obfuscation of what my character's doing and my character's being like no he doesn't let you look at how he opens a lock he's casting a spell over here please stand back and he's just trying it with his daggers lock picks can i get it open you know crowbar um you know, just a, a, not a, a mage, <laughs> right? Eventually, knock. You know, uh, but um, yeah, a mage that isn't afraid to get their hands dirty, and it was blast. Yeah, they lived. Yeah, seventh level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, right. <laughs> it, and and kind of rounding out our our concepts here, the last one is uh, what if what if the the reluctant wizard? What if it's a curse? What if? Yeah. What if from the time you were born, you affected things, milk spoiled, you know, when you were around, uh, d d roosters didn't crow at morning, they crowed at night, yeah. you know, like what, what, what if you, what if you were a, a warlock, a reluctant warlock or a reluctant like, well, yeah. sorcerer, like most yeah. people, you know, you want to play a character because you want the power, but like, no, no, no. Yeah. You want it. You got to RP it the other way though. Like just sure, flip yeah. it on its head. Yeah, this this is one I haven't really had a chance to like sink my uh, my teeth into. The idea of like as a player, I want something very opposite. From what my character wants kind of like character doesn't want this. Whatever, what however they got their access to magic, whether it either comes with like ter too terrible of a cost, or or uh, you know like the they didn't want it in the first place. They were backed into it, forced into it. So like to me, the one I'm really thinking of uh, or, or character. Concept I'm really thinking of this is Yennefer Witcher. Was paid like a really terrible mm. price for magic. Maybe it was worth it. Maybe it wasn't. And like just how that how she relates to her magic and the things she's done to to have it and like what motivated her and and how she's changed as a person. Like there's a lot about that style of 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 magic that that I think is still fertile ground for me conceptually magic that comes with real cost like it kind of sucks mm -hmm. you really got to think about it before you you go all in and, and start using your magic uh, so yeah i I'm, I'm i'm really liking that one i can also see it being a call of cthulhu type type character i'm curious if you've had any experience of this with magic and call of cthulhu uh i so i've not personally but other characters have had yeah. uh something similar uh player greg had a whole thing where he had this baseball bat that like basically had spells mm. in it but he never really wanted to use it because he it obviously cost him something to use yeah. uh never really discussed what that was but um but but yeah i would say the closest i ever had that was my my co guy koskoff who was gifted basically a magic item in his right fist and so the terrible burden of like every time i punch something a wild magic surge goes off like 
that was that was something to be feared. And so like sure. that was a that was a great that was a great uh, burden. But uh, but yeah, the 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 cursed individual, like I, I can see many kinds of warlocks or sorcerers like especially warlock where it's it's a thing where like you get to work out like with the DM. What 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 happened? How did it happen? And what causes it you to get further in this deal? Get what causes you to get more power? You obviously had to give something up. So like seeing how you slip down that that road to uh, to more power um, and seeing if it changes you, like oh you start to like it. Uh oh, that might be a bad yeah. thing. Like, yeah, no, I like that. It's it's a it's a nice way to tie it back to the first concepts. I think a lot of my early concepts about the loner sort of total nerd magic morphed into the obsessive loner looking for power and it was playing yeah. a lot of those realized like man that's kind of a well-trod path i've been on um mm -hmm. so i think now i'm looking to return to that thing to return to that kind of concept yeah. of someone who wants it for power but at a cost and uh love it yeah most definitely most definitely um well uh everyone out there if you like this conversation please hit like uh subscribe to our channel if you don't already do that and make sure to hit that bell so you get notifications and stuff like that also you can also follow us over on uh on twitter on facebook uh, instagram uh, just you know we'll see you around uh out in the world <laughs>